Okay, we're going to uh, start uh, the Town of Sangerville Board of Selectmen uh, workshop. It's regarding our MMA audit and concerns regarding the town hall. And we have a, a pretty good attendance. I think we should start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So a basic, uh, we, uh, you folks are here because we kind of reached out and tried to spread the word of what's been going on. I ran into Jerry at Robinson's, uh, and um, MMA uh, performed an audit about what two months ago, a month yeah. and a half ago, uh, and they found a, a few deficiencies, but they found one major deficiency, and it had to do with the foundation. Um, and so that was kind of the catalyst for all of this. Um, and there's been some, I guess, some differences of opinion as to how urgent this foundation issue is. The MMA gentleman, he seemed to think it was like a really urgent. He did. Uh, we had one contractor that came in and felt the same. And we've had another contractor that came in. He agrees it needs to be addressed, I think. But in the next year or two, he said. Yeah, like anyway. we, it's not... The building is not falling down. <laughs> kind of, what, yeah. Uh, so that that was kind of the the catalyst for all this. Um, and then the, the three of us, I think, for a long time, going back to budget, we've we've wondered about uh, the efficiencies of this building and the idea of a town office here, and whether it was completely practical. And so this, when this came up, it kind of spurred mm. that conversation on further. So that's kind of why we're here tonight, is just to share with everybody what we're thinking. Um, and is there any, I, you were on the Historical Society? I'm on the Historical okay. Society, and I was on the original town hall committee mm -hmm. that did the refurbishing. Oh, okay. In oh, was it 04, 05? Oh, way before that. Oh. oh no, it seemed like forever ago now. I don't well, in 91, the... Oh. Got the building on the national registry, and then from there you, you had a renovation committee that moved forward with redoing the inside of the building, yes. and then mm. right up to that project with the foundation, I think. We did do foundation work. Oh, yeah. That was done subsequent to the renovation. Yes. Um, but there was. <clears throat> that was done in 03 or 04, mm -hmm. somewhere. Started in 04 and I think finished by 05. Yeah. yeah, the foundation work was 05. There were some big bills in 04 and 01. Um, a series of large expenditures in 92, 93, and 94. And I think that was the that reconfiguration was... of the, this okay. floor. Um, and then 15. That was a, a big year. What was that though? That was a siding and building the record room, fixing the front porch and doors, and putting in heat pumps. Oh. Do you have a, a sum total? Yeah. Uh, based on uh, if you start in 92, uh, we're at 355000 plus either 130, 140,000 for this expected additional, repair. Additional. So we're gonna be close to a half a million dollars in the building since 92. Um, and basically, we're, if, we, if we do this repair, we're basically gonna have what we thought we had last year. Because, I mean, this, it's not gonna be, we're just fixing a foundation, so. Mm -hmm. um, is there still, um, I don't know, at one point in time there was a, um, a sidebar financial thing that was pulled together to save up for an elevator. Is that still in existence or is that gone too? I don't think those funds are allocated for an elevator anymore. There is a renovation reserve account with some. It's, yeah, it's got a few thousand in it, but I mean, not much. <laughs> They used it for a project one time. It may have been where the 
the heat pumps and siding came from. I don't know. Well, it was a, we uh, weren't it, part of that. It went out of us. It went quite a while ago. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's one way to keep the attendance no. down. <laughs> well, I unlocked it. And <laughs> no, but, but the elevator reserves now is not close to 30,000. <laughs> and it's going to be a two compression carry that went that corner. But <clears throat> we got in some kind of trouble with handicap access and stuff, the fire escape. And they made us put in a sprinkler system, which, which oh, okay. the board voted to take that reserve money for the elevator and do the sprinkler uh -huh. system. And then on top of that, you know, obviously, it's it costs a lot of money to to heat and electrify this place. On average, it's about seventy six hundred dollars a year to heat it. Um, electric is. Uh, is just under two thousand. Um, it's just it's a it's a castle, <laughs> and we use it a little bit of it. Um, so our we're just kind of exploring the idea of you know maybe uh, the long term needs of Sangerville as far as its town office is concerned would be something that's <coughs> more efficient, more practical. Um, something with modern windows and something that we could heat for a few hundred dollars a year and, you know uh, something that 20 years from now we we wouldn't have spent half a million dollars on um, so that's that's kind of where and this is in its infancy but. i have a question um and i just haven't had a chance to ask this with regard to the audit from mma mm -hmm. it was based on our liability insurance, is that correct? Correct. So, so, it, was there a caveat, if we don't make this repair, our liability insurance will, will go, go up. up? Or would they cancel our liability insurance? We haven't broached that far. I mean, he's, he said you can have time to get a plan of action together. You know, obviously towns can't snap sure. their fingers and come up with, you know, that kind of money immediately. Um, but yeah, I'd have to have the discussion with MMA as to, you know, if we don't do this, are you going, <laughs> yeah, are you going to cancel our insurance or what is the, he said, yeah, your premiums would definitely increase if you don't do this. And I think if, if they think it's dangerous, they'd cancel. And they were a couple. They were concerned about security. They don't really like the way uh, our counter is set up. Ideally, uh, our employees would have a separate entrance behind the counter, and then the public would come in, and, and they wouldn't have access to each other. That would. That was one of. If I understood his yeah, suggestion, and they, or and or cameras and or a panic button um, sure. to put together a plan to to make that safer in this day and age I guess you never know um, and sometimes there is one person and only one person in the in the building so but you haven't fixed the cost of those changes yet. the only thing no. we've gotten quotes on is the foundation yeah. and we Cam got two quotes cameras are inexpensive um, blocking that off would be a few and I haven't checked on a panic button. I don't know. I'll have to call the sheriff's department and see what. I did start looking at elevators, but I haven't got any costs. I reached out to a elevator company and said, you know, what are you looking at? I talked to the engineer um, who looked at the basement. He said, you don't need the, <laughs> the elevator. If you if you've got somebody willing to carry people up and down stairs, oh jeez, I'm going. <laughs> I'm going. Yeah, I don't think that's. <laughs> it's like oh, you can get around that. I'm like, okay. Um, I'm not thinking a that people are going to want you to carry them up and down stairs, and b if you've been up and down those stairs a there. In well, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I can tell you something a little bit funny. Okay. Years ago, we were having a town meeting upstairs. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about an elevator fund and stuff, and this lady had quite a concern about it. And she talked quite a while on it, and we 
the way she was talking, she was in favor of the elevator. And all of a sudden, she says, that's funny. She says, the boys can carry my mother up here. No reason other people can't carry them. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was kind of unique. <laughs> mm, yeah. And then, of course, at that time, we were having a town meeting, so to say. What, uh, what uh, lighted the excitement about the foundation? That inspection. The audit from the know, main I mean, municipal. What particular thing did they have concern with? Oh, uh, we've been down to look at it. Uh, if we understood it correctly, uh, the wall is, is bowing in uh, by quite substantially. I mean, we didn't measure it, but I think if you put a level across it, it might be as much as 10, 12 inches. Yeah, it's. You don't put a level on old buildings for heaven's sake. <laughs> well, this is a brand new wall. Yeah. This is a brand new wall. Um, and um, do you have the photographs of the, the, the repair that was done, the extensive excavation? It oh, wasn't yeah. just a facade repair, right. and, and you right. may remember, but I think it is valid to perhaps mm -hmm. pass those around because it's a slightly oh, disturbing that, that one, the company that did it, how many years ago? 15 years ago? Yeah. Approximately, yeah. Said, oh well, that's 15 years ago. I mean, I, I was surprised the extent of the um, repair. So, was it the company or the architect? I don't know. The engineering firm. The engineering, engineering firm. firm. Yeah, okay. There's some animosity between the engineering firm, I mean, the company and the town of Singapore, because at the time, the question came up of the flood board uh, as to who's going to be the flood for the works or the overseer of the job. And the representative from the engineering firm said that they would, you know, have somebody so that one of the representatives watch the work, make sure it was done properly. Hmm. And at the time, the town manager spoke up, said, I will take care of it. And then the engineering firm just walked away. So, supposedly the town manager was the clerk of the works. And uh, there's some animosity there, that's why the engineering firm, which was Cabinet's Association. That's correct. And E.W. Littlefield did the work. That's why Cabinet's Association won't work with you. Well, they oh, would come well, over, but they're well, going to charge will. us to they're come over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm? They're going to, they'll work with us. You just go yeah. back. Yeah, but mm -hmm. did, did they uh, explain the situation no. and what happened? Mm -hmm. No, there wasn't. No. Didn't say anything about this it. This ain't, this mm -hmm. ain't just hearsay. I, I heard it from a person that was on the town hall committee. So, the <clears throat> anyway, the movement of the wall has been since this. From what we understand, and from from the point of view of the two engineering firms, and right the that inspector. we have the, the yeah. quotes that we have today. Yeah. I think it's important to note that that wall was in. That's why they repaired it, but they never put it back. Mm -hmm. They they just faced the outside with what you see in the photos of large concrete with it marrying right into the stone that was there. And then uh, the bill car was improperly insulated. Um, right. It's insulated right to the floor. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, then the foundation for the bill car goes out, and that's freezing out there. And it's, if it lifts, it pushes the wall. That's what it looks like. That's exactly what, what it looks, looks like. like. Mm -hmm. yeah. Looks like somebody pushed against the building with a piece of heavy equipment. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what happened before that they repaired it, and then they did it again. And I can see it is getting a little worse. Yeah. Um, but it was never straight when they got done. They didn't straighten up uh -huh. at all. Does anybody know if we have to have a bilco? Yes, you do. To have two ways to get in and out, right? Mm -hmm. And also, you in the furnace down there. Well, yeah. Yeah. I, but it's but a modern it. furnace. It's a fairly I mean, modern could, furnace. That staircase and everything, I think you could get anything up and down that. Mm. You know what I mean? That's a fairly wide, nice staircase going down in. Mm. If you've got a modern boiler, it's not going to be very big if you replace it. Even the one that's down there now is oh, small. Yeah, it's very small. Yeah. 
I don't think we need to have us an ingress when it's not a public space. All right, so what it was, I have inspected it a couple of times. I, uh, Brady and I went along the outside, and you could see the surface of your reinforced concrete wall showing all the way around. It's above the, above the back, though. There's good under drains all underneath it and everything. And uh, there's been new brickwork or where the bill coal was in because at the time that was just a wooden bill coal. And the only access we had to this building years ago was a walkway the whole length of the building that went into a library in a down office. And it was kept clean and actually the frost and stuff worked on the wall and kicked it in. And uh, the brickwork around the bilco has a crack. All the new, you can see the new brickwork that was put in when that bilco was, was put in and it ain't cracked. And the brick is not a, a strong structure. It's never a uh, low point of a building or this vintage. You know, they're all the buildings are this way, uh, your courthouses, your schools, and the brickwork was more or less a, a cosmetic type. You had your pilasters that your carrying timbers would come on to that went down onto the main frame. The, what they used for pilasters could have been reinforced concrete, could have been metal, but there was something of a structural strength. You could bake clay, which a brick is made out of, had no strength whatsoever, if I was low bearing. And uh, so, uh, and like Jerry says, uh, the biggest problem I found was with the bilco being insulated. It should be insulated horizontal instead of vertical, vertical and let the heat out in there. And uh, the, main, the main wall had not moved. The brick, the brick wall is tipped in, which was, was done originally. But they have corrected it with the, with the brick wall, I mean the uh, concrete wall. And evidently, the, the plans call for pilasters all the way around the inside and along this end. And evidently, when they got in there, they must have found that there was some, some pilasters, uh, equivalent to pilasters, already in that rockwood. And uh, that's why they eliminate them, because I can't believe that uh, the contractor would just eliminate them pilasters that hold the structure of this building up. And uh, so then we come inside and look around, and then I looked at the prints the first time, then I looked at the prints, and Brady and I went back down inside, and I see the crack in your, in your library which is not the first time it's cracked. There's two or three repairs there. And that's a petition wall that was put in afterwards. It's nothing to do with the, the main structure of this building. And uh, then we went downstairs and uh, took my flashlight and looked around to see if we could see uh, what they call a coping stone, which is a bearing point for your main carrying timbers and the brickwork was covering up, we, we, couldn't, we couldn't see it. But mm. them timbers, the way they went into the wall, was all modded. They was modded in all the way around them. And it hasn't cracked. So that, that makes me believe that the building itself hasn't moved. But you're right, the, the brickwork is tipped in pretty high there, in between, in between your carrying timbers. It ain't, it ain't at the carrying timbers itself, it's in between. And it is tipped in quite noticeable. And uh, there's no sign of mortar on the floor or anything. In a building of that type, if it moved and broke the grout in the, in the brickwork, it would show mortar on the floor. And uh, so my personal feeling is I think our building is, is held the right where they intended to hold it. And it's got uh, sufficient pilasters for these carrying timbers, because these carrying timbers run north and south. And the building ain't moved because your north wall, there's nothing wrong with that. The only thing they ever did to that, they took out one window, right, righty on the, I think we see one window they hatched out on the, 
Well, they took one out. Yeah, they took one out somewhere else. But yeah, I think there was only yeah. one on the north side. And, uh, that brickwork isn't isn't uh, moved or changed. And uh, the Bilco, very possibly by insulating it like that, it might have. That's the only place that's got any any backfill against it. The brickwork has nothing against it. There's nothing to push it. And it's going to push that massive wall in order to change that brickwork. And that massive wall hasn't moved. You've got a key at the bottom with a nice cement floor. And at the time it did it, I ain't so sure that there was a cement floor down there. No, they put but one they, in. They, huh? put, they put it in. It, they put it in at the mm -hmm. same project. Okay. Yep. So you see that that gave it a chance for the frost to, to move that rockwork because it wasn't keyed in. There's two things that we require before we backfill the foundation. One, we're going to pour the floor. <clears throat> two, we're going to put the deck up. So we're holding the top and the bottom of that foundation before I backfill it. So we won't, we won't crack it. And uh, what, I, what I would recommend if it was my building, what I would do, I would get a, a good uh, drywall in here and have him move off that crack and fill it in and watch it for the rest of the year and see what happens. Humidity will cause cracking in drywall. And uh, this is not a humidity stable environment. It goes up and down, you know, just like our homes. Well, in fact, there was, there was water moving through the basement when we were down there. Yeah, I've got there's, two hours, yeah, because it's been a wicked wet summer. Yeah. Water in the uh, spot where they were going to have the elevator? Yeah, there's, there's a portion in that doesn't said, have the cement you got a swimming panels, pool there. <laughs> and it just runs through the building. <laughs> oh, oh, is that right? Yeah. Over in the mm. back side here somewhere? Yeah, yeah. 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 it kind of runs off in the corner, there's no cement. The cement floor is made up of panels, like yeah. rectangular panels, and the one end doesn't oh, have any panels. Oh, stress cut. Yeah, oh, that's what it looks like. Yeah. 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 They pour it, then they, then they just... They yep. saw, and saw a little relief crack. But they didn't do the whole, the entire floor. There's one area that it looks like it's still either ledge or whatever. Okay. Yeah. And the water was moving through there when we were down there. Yeah. We didn't go over into the back side. We just come went along the south side. And the There's west, water west in the corner. elevator. And, uh, My only question, tell me, <laughs> as far as the pylons is, and I reference them just because of the mill and dealing with that and the brickwork and things like that. And what I see up there but so if you look at that wall if you look at the corner posts you can see in your brickwork how your bricks come down and then your brick is actually you can see where they're going around something there's a pilaster in that corner right. for your support but if you look at that wall all the way up through I couldn't notice where they're doing they're doing that anywhere usually if there's a pilaster on a flat brick wall you'll see where it's you know what I mean? That square comes out around it on those points, but you're not, you not, don't see that. Not necessarily. Your uh, your brickwork deal is a cosmetic yep. cover. Just like you you ride by and you look at a brick house, you think it's a brick house, but it ain't. No, I, I understand you know, that. Yep. And, and that's what happened on your, on your full length of your wall. It was just cosmetic over whatever the pile last is at. But when they when they dug into that uh, bell call, I'm sure they exposed them pilasters in that in that corner because them pilot, one of them carrying timbers was coming right close to that bell call, and uh, that's what evidently made the decision not to have to put the other pilasters in. But that's what I'm saying, though. Tell me, is when you look down that wall, you know what I mean? I know it's cosmetic, but usually you can see where the brick isn't perfect anymore. Usually you'll see where the brickwork has to come out around because that pile has to... In some of them, you're right. Yeah. In, in some of them... But you can see that on the ends, ends, but you can't see that up through that wall at all. Some of them ain't, but I've yeah. tore this type of building down. And in between them pile I could take it right out with a clamp. Right. But them pile I didn't grab a hold and take out. And the, the, the building's uh, unreal rugged. We've had to go right into them with cables and suck out some of the main timbers in order for the crane to pick it apart. And, and uh, so your schoolhouse was that way. I've been involved in at least two schoolhouses. I 
tore a good part of the mill down down here. And uh, it's it's amazing what w the way they built these buildings. And when they built this building, they did it at a time when Sangerville was flush with money. So I don't think that they they cheat the construction. I think they they probably put in a lot of very good money to make sure that this is going to be a solid structure. Right, and, and Jerry will will verify that there's two type of structures out there that were built years ago. One is real short 80 cheap, and the other one is an excellent rugged structure. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they don't seem to be any in between. I mean, they're either excellent <laughs> structures or they're sheds or castles. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's all together. And, and this is one of the one of the excellent structures, this type of building. And, uh, well, uh, that, uh, uh, that would be great if it turns out that uh, your view of it is, is accurate. Um, but it, it still kind of begs the question, I think, is long term, is this the right venue for our little town office? We Do said we, that 40 years ago, I mean, right. right. And I, I think. I wasn't for putting the money into this building that we put into it. Because, <coughs> you know, it's just an empty pit. Even if, we, even if we don't have to do this foundation, we spent $355,000 and but we have what want, we have. If you want to get a crowd here, <laughs> make that public statement and put it out so people can see it. And I'll tell you, this room ain't going to hold because there's people <laughs> out there, Diane, right? That no, and that's are, fine. They are in love with this structure. It's, it remind, there's, it, uh, Tom, you remember, you invited us to one of your meetings a while back, and you had a speaker from uh, Dover Foxcroft, the Historical Society. Yeah. What was his name? It was uh, Chris. Was he Chris Ma? Moss. 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 Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, he was. Uh, he was infectious with his enthusiasm. He, they, they did a fabulous job. Oh, I've been to a couple of things at the, the hall since they redone Central. that, and and maybe maybe that's the answer to, to uh, a facility like this is that sort of approach. Yeah, that, that was a two million dollar, mostly grant funded project. That was yeah, grant and private money, and they just he said it took him over a decade to get yeah. to it wanted to get to. Yeah. Um, but it, 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 I just question whether that's really the job of the taxpayers to try to salvage this castle. Um, we don't have a lot of money. That's what bothers me. It's a historical building. Why can't we get funding for it? And, and we, we don't qualify or something. I mean, we've had to take it all out of our own pocket. We're, we're like I said, we're spending almost ten grand a year just to heat it and electrify it. Right. But nobody would do this with their personal money. A businessman can understand that. Right. That's right. Why I've been against it for years. No, I. So that's all. You know, maybe, maybe an approach like they did in Dover would would work. It's probably not going to work overnight, but that's the answer. It's not necessarily raising the mill rate for another twenty years just to hold our ground. Um, and will they do it for a public building like like the Central Hall down there? It it changed its structure and use. Well, what happened was in '08, the town hall, uh, the the the, uh, the town office left that structure. Right. And the historical society said, "We don't want to lose this building." Right. And they they transitioned the ownership of that building over to the historical society, and it took them. 12 or 13 years to get to where they are now. Then but they, now it's a qualified for grants. And, mm -hmm. Right, and they, mm -hmm. they but, mm -hmm. but we can't do it unless we not as a town. possibly get out of here and then nothing says it's going to happen. And that's fine. What I mean, whatever happens, happens. You know? But we do need a town office. Oh, definitely. Uh, and, and we don't need to spend $10,000 to get a hit, heat it. Uh, right. We don't need all this square footage and we don't need antique windows. Um, you know, we've, we've talked about how challenging it is to try to save money now. It, it's just, just not a lot of big buckets of money out there anymore. Um, 
None of our property values are going up. And Bridie sent me the numbers today with the SAD and the county, just those two items. So when we all wake up on January 1st, we've got a mill rate of nearly 15. We haven't done anything yet. Mm. Haven't, haven't plowed any snow, haven't cut any grass, haven't done anything. And that's not going to get any easier. No. And I think spending another three or 400,000 over the next 15 or 20 years on this building, which is not an unrealistic, we spent- It's history. We spent 350 in the last 20 and we got what we got. That's why some of us thought with the idea of uh, turning a school into a town office and maybe- Even that would be- You know, at, at, at the that time. time. I took a few minutes, I just, this is Herman. Just a humble little brick building. Levant. Now these obviously are new buildings. They probably were one time in buildings like this, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. um, green. Brand new. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thorndike. They're nothing fancy. Right. But I think we probably, for, for less than what we've spent here in the last 20 years, we could have built one of these. Had the no, library probably, at one end. Probably a quarter million. Yeah. We'll at, today, at today's price, huh? A decent uh, town hall. Heat it for a few hundred dollars. But the problem is, you've got the public, you've got to convince. Well, that's what this is all about. Right. It's trying to talk to people about the, the real numbers. Right. Um, put an article in the town meeting and... and uh, we get our numbers together. Right. Put some people right. And let people really down. understand what is this is about. Because you ain't got quite so many high drops as you used to have two years ago, but... Well, and I think... But, uh, I think that there might be as much enthusiasm about this building as there was the one in Dover Foxcroft. It really could very well be. It's not going to be fixed overnight. Uh, but if you, got, if you got our municipal government out of the way and, and let those that are interested Do go after it, you never know. Mutual. People spearheading that one in Dover, though. He was he was pretty you know, enthusiastic. He liked this building. This Dr. Ferno and yep. there's a lot of Hey, maybe you know. it wouldn't work. But that's a separate issue from what we need to do. Tom? Well, I think Denny wanted to say something and I'd like to say something after Sure. I just had a question. I, I um, wondered about the price of the insurance on this unit building. Um, do I have it with me? Got they have it assessed at, at nine hundred thousand dollars. That's what it's assessed at. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, what do you think yeah. we can sell it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two buildings over here that we just sold. Well, it's funny because I talked to some local business people, and we just kind of, you know, ingest. But I, you know, what would you pay for it? And everybody says, I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't take it. Right. <laughs> would take gift of it. That's what I. And now maybe they're kidding, but. Right. I know. So property. Tom. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I just want to say that when Chris Moss here, here, here. gave his uh, little talk about what happened right. at Central Hall okay. and the grant procedures and everything else, he was thoroughly enthusiastic and on board about. I don't know if you want to call it contributing his information, his sources, and his contacts, but he might still be a valuable person. I have no yeah, doubt. Oh, I think Sit he down and talk Yep, he was really, he was Mr. Energy. And he liked our building. We, yeah, he we did. took him upstairs and. Yeah, well, it's in better shape than what they had to start with. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is in yeah, far better yeah. shape. The town office moved out of that place because it was just a rat hole. <laughs> it was. <laughs> well, like they got, uh, the history's online. It's, it's, they threatened to move several times yeah, before they finally went and general away. General liability uh, and knowing the property casualty. I was going to say the physical. Physical? So, so, so the general liability is 1900 and the property and casualty is 1423. And that's just fire. Yeah. Yeah. Did and they then, indicate that if there isn't anything done, uh, well, that's yeah, that's that the would be an issue with them. Yeah. Having and then we then we'd have to sit and talk, and I don't know, they'd either raise the premiums or they'd say, yeah, we don't even want to be or. Well, sometimes it, you know they end up the company that they are writing through refuses, and they end up with something like Lloyd's of London or something, right. and the premium well, would go. 
Yeah, aren't they Yeah. Yeah. Um, Right, Almost so what would end up happening is that they drop those weeds. We'd have, we would be we searching. Would have to, yes, we would be. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Did this audit that we had, this was labeled as a liability. I, that word always makes me nervous and, you know, putting into the. Is it a liability? Yeah, it was. Labeled as a liability? Yes. So on our books right now, we have an agency saying that we have a quote, major liability here. And I think, you know, that's something we yes, need we do. to think about carefully. That's a bad thing. Well, and that's part of the reason we jumped on these contractors. But it's, and you've just heard Chummy, he, he feels like this building is, is safe. I think that's a fair way. So, yeah. uh, it would not, I mean, it, it's, I think it would be worth having, uh, inviting the audit back and let Chummy show them around and share their opinion and see if share what we have for information. Yeah, I mean, and what do you want? Because we've got two contractors that well, think we, we, need we, we, think we need to spend one hundred and thirty thousand oh, dollars. And get something in writing. Right. I mean, that, oh, we, well, we, we can. Have, uh, I can get a structural engineer in here and for five gonna, six hundred gonna, dollars. I mean, get a <laughs> MMA's liability. They're they're going to want a structural engineer. Yes, to sign they, off. they do. Correct. Yes. I mean, if, we're going to have to go there. Yes, we are. And we are going to have to. Put it in, we're going to need to put it in writing. Yes, you know I mean? correct. And that, it's good. That label is just. I mean, God forbid something does happen, we could really be in trouble. Not, not that I've seen anything. I mean, I'm not sure what could happen, but with that label, I think that's a dangerous situation. We got to limit the number of people in the library. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, well, the engineer that did look at it was worried about the weight of the books. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. So I mean, that's how much discrepancy there is. To the 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 librarian could be at yeah. risk. To it hasn't moved at all. Right. Yeah. And and then one contractor said it really needed to be done now, as soon as possible, and, and another one and said within saying, a year or two. Yeah. He's, was the auditor that looked at it? Was he an engineer? What was his background yeah. as far as? No, insurance. He's, he's insurance. He was, he's insurance. So he, and he was new, so he but had he's the never only one that's looked at it. No, he had two never looked yeah, yes, I've had two had con contractors. Two contractors and one of the contractors brought in an engineer. Oh he did. Yeah. So to look at it. That's a good scenario. If I had the engineers working for me, they'd be working in my favor. Well yeah. Well yeah, <laughs> so, I understand. Yeah. He was working no, for the contractor, yes, that is true. Yeah. I haven't Contracted with any. Yeah. I started with carpenters. What was the age to, of your uh, inspector that did the evaluation? I don't know. He's. I mean, was it, was it a young. No, a he's young in his. Person? I bet he's in his 50s. 50s. <laughs> and I mean, obviously, that's going to have to get worked out. We'd have to right. figure out what right. actually needs to be done there. And But my my feeling is. These are separate issues. If, they, if, if we don't need to put one hundred and thirty thousand dollars down there, that's that's great. But that's I'm still not convinced that this is the place for us to be for the next twenty five years. Well, I agree with you one hundred percent. So. And I don't. I'm sorry. I don't. No, I know you I don't. don't. It's okay. Well, I know. I, I understand. But financial wise, I understand the finances. I understand the practicality of it. But in looking at this town, and, and, and I haven't been here very long. I mean, I've only been here 40 years. <laughs> I haven't been here that long, but I have seen in the time that I've lived in Sangerville, Sangerville is just slowly just, just dying in the dust. We don't have an awful lot that we can say is the center of our town anymore, except a couple of buildings that are on their last legs derelict kind of buildings. I mean, there's a couple of businesses in the bottom, but really, um, one match can do them in pretty quickly if, if the wind doesn't or the snow doesn't. Um, there is no real center of the town except this building. This building is an architectural gem. We put an awful lot of money into it because for almost a hundred years it was neglected as a building. It was just up, it was big, it wasn't painted often. It, the, this place was a rat hole itself before the renovations took place. The town never invested the money to keep this place the way it should have been, as the cornerstone and the heart, the, the masthead of what Sangerville is. If this goes away, that we don't have a school anymore, 
We don't have, you know, we just don't have things that can identify this as the center of Sangerville other than a crossroad. And no one's suggesting that we tear it down. Well, no, I'm not saying that. But so, what I'm saying is, when I first moved here, every town meeting was held upstairs. It was a gathering place for the town. It was a place where, um, I believe it was the fire department that put on a dinner in, in the front end, in the kitchen there. And it was, it, was, it was the heart pulse of what was going on in this town. And very slowly, it has just petered away and petered away. And it's getting to a point now that if this doesn't maintain itself as the center of the town, with the town library and a community room that's used, and the town office, then we lose that, that identifier. And I'm not speaking as a historical society member. I'm speaking as a citizen that I've watched the town just wither and die. And to know historically where it was, we've lost industry, we've lost population, we've lost a lot. And to give this up as kind of like the center of government and the center of gathering is to me, it just, it, it just crushes me to think that. I, you know, Town meetings, oh, we can have in the firehouse. The firehouse is a torture. It's freezing. Snowy. If it's, if, it, yeah, and, and if we have a special town meeting, they have to have trucks outside. I really thought we were all going to keel over from carbon monoxide poisoning last special meeting because it's just not a good meeting place. No. And yet we have a place right upstairs that could be renovated and reused as our town meeting. And yes, I understand the cost of it. There's no reason why we can't go after grants. I don't know if we went after grants when we did our original. Originally, uh, we had a matching grant. Yeah. We, the town spent 52000 and and it was a match. Mm -hmm. We got 52000 as well. But then the town went beyond that during that same renovation right. and spent more. Right. But that, but then I think subsequently we checked into grants. It's not available for municipality. Got to go back to this uh, something mm -hmm. different. That's why I think the dollar strategy is it's sound. It worked a few miles away. I don't know why it couldn't work here. Because that's a county seat. With an awfully large population compared to Sangerville, it's on a main road. From and you know Bangor. what? It might not work. It's just. You know, but that doesn't. It just. But we're in the same boat. Yeah. This is to renovate this upstairs and put this elevator. You're talking a million bucks. You're not going to do that for less. Well, and it just kind of irritates me that things like pre-planning, like the elevator reserve money, was just pull the plug to use it for something else. But as Jerry said, it was for the sprinklers. I mean, yeah. we probably, again, couldn't get insured to have people in here with that. I mean, I'm There's sure so much work to be done upstairs. If you put an elevator right now, it would, really, it would literally be an elevator to nowhere. Oh, it's I understand. A, it's a mess. I've been upstairs. Yeah, I mean, the, <laughs> the ceiling <laughs> is all, it's just yeah, it's the electrical. It's, it, it's, it might be salvageable. It might not be. But in the meantime, We've got a town we've got to run. Mm. Mike, is it worth putting a committee together to at least start, as you say, well, start I, the process? I can imagine a couple of committees. A, if, if we're going to look at a building like this, uh, we would need a committee for that. Mm -hmm. Secondarily, what are you going to do with this place? If the Historical Society wants to look at the, uh, an approach similar to what they did in Dover, and I, th I bet you're right, I bet Chris would be a great resource. That's, a, that's another group. Um, but the, the two are not necessarily linked. And, th and I think that's, maybe that's part of the reason we can't get grant money is we've been reluctant to, to de-link them. Um, I, I just told, I, we wake up every January and our mill rate's 15 and we haven't spent a dime on anything yet. Your property values are not going up. That hasn't happened in 15 years. So that's just the reality of living in Piscataquis County. Uh, it's not going to get easier. Um, if we spent three hundred and fifty thousand twenty, we're going to do it again. We need to be efficient. If 
and if there's a way to save this building, I think it would be great. But I don't think the two go together very well. No, no the Ann could only touch on about half of the sentimental value of this building. Years ago, this used to be the gym for the school. We had the school. Right now, we're sitting in the fire department in the public work place. That's all we had. There was no, there was no fire hall. In fact, the sandbar was there and the little tractor in the end and stuff. And uh, we used to have school plays, basketball games, uh, country western music shows, different uh, uh, plays and programs that the adults, like Toby, Toby's parents and stuff, uh, you know, was in. They had minstrel shows, and I hope I can say that. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it, it's a main hub. It's a pillar of the town. And, uh, and it's going to be very, very hard. And, but financially, I can understand it. Put well, it, it's, it almost seems like the best shot at it being that again is to let go on the municipality side and, and let the historical society or what, you know, the, the friends of. Sangerville Town Hall tackled this problem. Well, that, that's what you've got to That's do. exactly what they did in Dover. You've got to shift it from one side to the other side of the yep. scale. Yep. And that's going to be a hard process. But the other thing is, one thing that I find is interesting is that even back when I was on budget committee, I heard all about we ought to fix the upstairs and we ought to put an elevator. But it's a talk. Nobody's got a committee going. Nobody's, we have yet, I've, since I've been here, I've never had anybody express any interest in using that upstairs. Other than the comment about it would be nice to have town meeting up there. But the fire department, for a long time, they used to have poker tournaments, they stopped. And they played, they played uh, Beano or some yep. kind of games or something. They used to have dances up there. I mean, then that whether it's it the way it is today, you could still do every bit of that. You could rent that up if you wanted to. You could have a party up there. You could have a dance up there. You can play poker up there. There's nothing stopping nobody. But nobody's asking about it. But I think there's going to be a lot of money invested before you can qualify for a public meeting. Correct. But what I'm saying, though, Chummy, is that space is still available to use today. Right. But there doesn't seem to be any interest in using it. Well, that's on one side of the scale. So you've got to move it to the other side somehow. And that's the that's the problem. This the hall and the hall and door was used for all the same sort of things. At one point, the basketball games were played there, <laughs> and there's a big balcony. I like basketball. <laughs> and there's so many people in the balconies that the building inspector <laughs> shut the building down because they were they were flexing in. The, the, the balcony. So I mean, it was it was a real center of activity. Mm -hmm. Just get up and go Sheer like salt. that. We'd get yeah. the building yeah. jumping right up yeah. down. <laughs> Yeah. And, and we always was up in the balconies here at town meeting and stuff and at your plays and stuff. But in in the, that's all these towns had for municipal building was this type of structure, and everything was centered around it. I suspect that if the planning, if if the select board and the budget committee recommended to the town that this facility be given to the historical society, that there would be support for that. I'll well, bet the, you there would be historical, historical society. society would <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's because that. all we have for finances was what we have in order to pay the insurance for liability. That's all that we have. We don't have. We don't have funding, right? No. <coughs> well, remember, uh, you didn't really want the school. Mm -hmm. No. We gave that school to you for a while. You didn't really want that. Because mm -hmm. it's too that, that was just a temporary measure. Yeah, that, that was, was so still that you could get the <coughs> But this it was is the same in this situation. Mm -hmm. It's but just like the friends of Central Hall that, that they, it, like I said, it may not work. Mm -hmm. But if the town hadn't left that facility in Dover Foxcroft, it wouldn't be as good as it is today. Mm -hmm. No, it would have been torn down right now. Yep. I mean, they moved out of it. They, the town was not going to invest any more but, money into that. But place. the town of Dover moved into a school that they had to take yep. back. Mm -hmm. They did. Mm -hmm. So that is a, another thing that influenced them, which we, we don't have it. No, no, I, I, 
I'm thinking building from scratch, but there may be other options. We haven't even really looked at that, but. Uh, you know, I'm you, today with this building, what we get out of it, ain't gonna put a dent in the expense of a. I bet you're right. Office. I wonder what you actually could get for it. Well, uh, Masonic call, we got 18,000 for them. We got good money for that. And you Legion went Hall, they had to beg them to give them the 10,000 that they offered them to start with. And you know, if you sold this building, I don't really think you can sell a parking lot with it. You kind of need that for your fire department. Correct. That's not an easy sell without a parking lot. When this building was original, they didn't have any access on the north side of this building. The they had, the they had a, a roadway, but I think the roadway was permission from the landowner that owned the building right next door to it. Oh, wow. This building actually fills... So it was just street parking? Right. Yeah. Same idea as the well, this building. They couldn't back over there because the, the parking lot was full of uh, a building with sheds and everything. Yeah. And there's just a roadway that come up through and went around that building here. But I, I think the town had just an agreement with the mm -hmm. neighbors that they could, they could mutually use, use it. Mm -hmm. It's sad, but you can drive all around this small town without having to projections for the state and especially for central Maine north I mean they're they're abysmal I mean you know we're we're, it's in, worse. we're we're in company with every other town basically in the same situation and I think it does as you say it's, it's we need to figure out a formula because it's going to come down to dollars and it's not going to get better it's going to get worse and that, that I think it's reality so and we're it's very lucky to have a, a group of people that took that over. Mm -hmm. There's some places on the coast that I've seen that have done the same thing. But in most small towns, they look like North Dexter Grange. Um, Actually, and, did you never notice that? And they that? have saved that. I mean, they wouldn't have if the wayside hadn't come in there. Um, that was, and a lot of private dollars in that that's the situation yeah. in Dover. A lot of private oh. dollars. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. That wasn't Chuck Yones' is excavated sitting there right now. If you look down at that foundation, oh, yeah. that's, that's still in the Oh, is that right? <laughs> that's yeah. why that's there? Right. Yeah. It's pretty bad. Well, the East Lamble Grange was that way until the yep. younger generation took over. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. it, we almost lost it. Mm -hmm. We almost mm -hmm. lost it. And the church <laughs> is gradually going yeah, downhill with the do steeple, the nice towers up there, two of them up, that's gone, and gone. the Cleves family and, and the neighborhood, uh, years, you know, had fundraisers and stuff to try to keep it. Structure up, but I don't know how long that's going to last. <laughs> but that's the other. I mean, we're not, you know, as far as the town wise, we're not getting a lot of younger people moving in, mm -hmm. and our whole population is aging. Most is retirement. A lot more is going there. So back what Mike was saying, as far as that mill rate starting at 15, that's even more crucial, I think, with the what we have for citizens to try to do what we got to do. We're actually we in pretty good shape. We've got towns around us that are, are fighting to stay in the low 20s on their mill rate, right. and they're losing the battle. Um, and their, their part of values aren't going up either. I mean, once your mill rate's in the 20s, mm. you lose a quarter of your home's value every decade. And if, if your property values aren't going up, well, look it's look gone. Milo, look at Milo. Uh, it's, I'm thinking the, of Milo, exactly. Dexter. They're, close to they're in what? Yeah. yeah. Early 20s. 23, 4? And most families we know, their, their largest investment, their most significant investment is their home. So are you going to move to Piscataquis County and put $150,000 or $200,000 on a nice home knowing that you're going to lose half of that home in 20 years? You're going to end up doesn't work. like Atkinson did. Yep. Mm -hmm. Unless we... They got to a point they had to do something. Yep. 
It's just the reality. I, I think my graduating class in Dexter in 79 was about the size of the entire high school now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Poppy. Yeah. There was 120 in my class. I think that's the whole school now. Yeah. yeah. We've got less population here now than we had back in the early 1900s. Right. <laughs> that's true. We only got roughly 1,000, maybe 1,100. And a lot more trees. Yeah. <laughs> Dover's got over 4,000. They're just enough to be in the federal regulation. Well, it wasn't too many years ago. We were sitting on a surplus in this town, close to a million dollars. I hate to use the word surplus, unexpended. So that's uh, sir, we're still pretty close. Yeah. Right okay. So we have that, and I remember at the time that MMA came in and recommended we should probably cut that by two thirds to keep a three hundred thousand dollar. Surplus. What we've been trying okay. to do is uh, be more aggressive with the roads, trying to get... I, I think when we started, the, the thought process was you were lucky to get around in 20 years. Well, we're hoping to cut that in half. Um, if we get next year's project done, we'll, we'll be in pretty good shape. But so the last two years, basically, we've done half the paving through budgetary, and then the other half has come out of that surplus. Mm -hmm. Essentially, we, it seems like people have already really paid for the paving. It's just sitting there. It's just sitting there. So we're putting that money to work. I think your investment philosophy too has been a really good one. That has that turned out really was a freebie <laughs> and really smart, and especially with rates where they are now. It turned out that that was a high part, but yeah. high point wasn't it? High really three percent was a high number. And anyway, um, yeah, that was a good one. I'd just like to speak to what we've been talking about. Uh, I like this building. I do too. Yeah, I really do. And I, I really feel like it serves us well. It meets our needs as a town. It is more expensive to keep and pay insurance on than a new building would be. But to build a new building, you're going to spend a quarter or a half a million. And, and it could be put into this building just as well. Like, when you mentioned the heating cost, the cost to heat my house is two-thirds of what this is. My insurance is almost what this is. For just a home. Uh, yeah, but you got I, I know your home. I don't, I don't want to put the town office in there, either. <laughs> <laughs> That's way more billing than we need. I want one of these. <laughs> okay? I can heat it for a few hundred dollars. <laughs> I, I get it. I totally get it. Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 can do, this building very we can do the one with a yeah. brick. Yeah, but you know, I mean, I, my thing though is, I don't think this building does meet the needs of our town anymore. We have this little room for meetings, which works for this. It doesn't work for town meetings. We have an upstairs that a quarter of a million dollars ain't going to touch to be able to renovate. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't. From what the the gentleman that yeah, was here referencing the oh Dover, yeah. I, the numbers were incredible. a lot more than that. Mm. Is what he figured we would be into this building to get close to being able to use it. Oh, uh, to include an elevator and some things like that. But it's all sprinkled and everything. But the the office area, even as far as MMA, the liability end of it, it doesn't work for a modern office as far as the security. They don't like that there's no egress for the employees or a separate entrance. They don't like that you come into the public in this day and age and everybody is right there. They want to see that petition just because of you know right. everything going on in the country. So the building itself for what we're using it for really doesn't work for the town. I mean it will if we dump enough money into it. But we're, to do that you're looking at the four outside walls and nothing inside to get it to where it's going to work. I got a question. How many town offices have you been in that meets that qualification you just stated? None of the old ones. That's the problem. Well, Guilford? Well, Guilford does now. Moving. Guilford's it does now. They just moved. They're moving. Well, they're they moving, did. yeah, but I mean, at this point... The, they moved. Mm -hmm. huh? They're moved. They're in mm -hmm. the new building. Are they in the new building now? Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. Yeah. But do they have separate, separate entrances yep. for the employees? Yep. Okay. And you have, that, that, you have, you have that, that, but Dover doesn't. 
Nope. Well, they didn't do that. Yeah. Dover's in the, in the elementary school, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Dover's in the elementary school. Right. Yeah. Over the, That's it's modernized, isn't it? Yeah. But, but yeah. everyone comes in through <laughs> the same door to go down oh. the hallway oh. into the yeah, office. But if yeah. you get online and you just, it only takes a few minutes, you'll, you'll start finding all of these brand new buildings. Litchfield, Herman, Abbott. Abbott. They're all, they built these very efficient, some are more handsome than others, I'll admit. Uh, but you got a you got a place for your town meetings. You got you. It's they're all on they're clean. One floor. One floor. Yeah. Abbott never had a structure like this, did it? I don't know. I don't. Know. You know where they are right now, though. In Abbott, uh, I think they're originally weren't they part of in the, the old Tickham building or off the side of that? I think. Originally. Yeah, I think out uh, back a bit or something. I think uh, is how they. Well, yeah, it was something. But, but they never was any any building like this, uh, yeah. like it was in Dover and mm. and uh, Guilford never had a. Uh, Newport has a modern yeah. building. Yeah. You know, Mike, another thing that you, you talked about was, you know, looking futuristically down the line. And I think one of the jobs of, this, of our select board of our town, just like everybody else in this area in rural, it, actually throughout rural America, is we're going to have to start scaling. And we're going to have to start scaling down. And it's, and if we don't, we will be in trouble because you can't raise, you know, we have to really keep this tax situation under control. So I, I think it's going to become a major scaling issue and not up. It's happening one way or the other. Yeah, I mean, without question, it's going to be reality. Tom? You know, the issue about the office security, back when Ken Woodbury was the town manager, he ran some numbers and got some estimates okay. on eliminating access to the actual town office part of the building and having people out in the hall out here instead and the security window with a counter and whatnot where the bulletin board kind of is now it was around seventeen thousand dollars but that didn't fly very far at all people no. just thought it was completely ridiculous of yeah. money to spend on mm -hmm. and i know the clerks at the time you know they were they were looking kind of looking forward to it that something like that was going to happen. As far as I know, we've had no real incidences in the office, but it's like it's been mentioned, you know, it's something that could happen at any time. I mean, I've been at two select board meetings uh, years back where I wasn't sure what was going to happen here. <laughs> I seriously thought it was going to turn into a very bad situation because there was one fellow that was here that threatened the members on the select board that were sitting up here. I wasn't on the board at the time, but he, his quoted words were, I'm going to take you down. Mm -hmm. right? oh, I remember that meeting. <laughs> we, we have dodged all that so far, but Good. maybe with this topic it could get... Yeah. I just assume not talk about the one time it does happen. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. even the window itself, I remember that discussion, and I, I don't think it ever did get in the lawn, but it's talking in meetings, uh, and that, I mean, the people didn't want that. They wanted to be, they said that was cold, yeah. and they didn't want to just walk up. They wanted to be able to go in and be friendly with them. <laughs> And, and talk for and yeah. hours to the employees. I remember right, we, that got kiboshed in the budget committee. We kind of yeah. didn't yeah. let that go any further. I do remember it yeah. went on for quite but a I remember the, the, the big part, what was actually the topic of that was, it was all about the security in here, but there was no added security to the windows when you pulled in the parking lot. So oh. if you was ever going to do anything, you could have, right you didn't have to get window. out of your vehicle. You know what I mean? You, so one kind of didn't really right. go. But there that. was a lot of sentimentality. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That's why we tried to change anything with this building. I mean, uh, and I totally understand that it is a beautiful building. And, but all of those were that are all tumbling down now. It's a shame. Dover is so lucky that they were, had a group of people that were, had the energy and the finances. And, and, the finances. and the finances. And they do have a lot of backing over there. I know there were a lot of uh, people that made donations. And yeah, I, there was a lot of private money that oh, went into that, some business. businesses. It's like the Santa Theater. I mean, look what they've done with yeah. that. Yeah. Same idea. Mm, it's sad. We need to lose all these. I think if we abandon this building and for a new building, that it would be another dollar giveaway. Mm -hmm. uh, 
because we don't have Dover's a county seat. They have uh, the people that would enough people and people that had enough influence to get that done. And what would you use this thing for? <laughs> well, that's kind of that's an interesting question because if you, <laughs> the answer to that is there really is no, there really would be no use. Then maybe it's it's it's, it's self-evident what needs to be done. It's multi-story, so it wouldn't make low-income housing, which seems to be the mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. thing to do. That would be an <laughs> awful thing to do to this building. Yes. Right. Oh gosh. <laughs> that project lowering ain't been proven, <clears throat> proven profitable yet. It has not. It's still fledgling. It's it's young. It hasn't uh, mm -hmm. hasn't gone long enough to prove that it's going to be self-sustainable. Mm -hmm. What's well, only self-sustainable because you have so much free money available to get it to where it's at. The, the building itself will never, if you look at the net investment compared to what they're ever going to get back, it's never going to be a profit building. You're never going to. Never well, yeah, but it's got to be. It's got to be so it can operate itself. Correct. In that's what I'm saying. They can't even, it's not even at that stage yet. Right. Forget about be. the investment. Right. right. And they'll never get the their investment out of it. Hmm. Never would in in this area. But but I mean, one thing for me, like when I think about like similar to like the Masonic Hall in Guilford, some it, depending on where it was or whatever, where you did have a split level. So that way there you could have a meeting area, you could have a town office area, kind of like Abbott's got the same. Is that Parkman's? Parkman does. That's what theirs basically is as well, right? It's a good deal, like basement on the back yeah. where they do their voting yeah. and their... Yeah. Um, That's what Litchfield did. Yeah, the Masonic Hall like in Gilbert would be ideal. Yeah. Because you would enter the upper level for your meeting room, mm -hmm. and the lower level for your, your offices and your... Yeah. Then you could have a have the um, thermostat difference in the areas, mm -hmm. make it more efficient. Also, are we sure that we are not eligible for any grant money? I mean, if we had a consultant, I mean, someone who, because I mean, it's all about writing a grant. Are, are we sure? No. I mean, I think that's another area then that really should be. Explored. I know back when Ken Woodbeard was here, it was that was then that was the case. I don't know what things may have changed how that works, but... Did Ken look into it? He, yeah. did. he did, and was not able to... As far well, as I, I never approached yesterday. Just said that, oh, that's why they had to... That's why we shuffled to, the Abby Fowler back and forth, yeah. because right. the municipality right. wouldn't qualify, but yeah. well, the historical society did. Well, yeah. I mean, there What's, may be a way that you It's can, not so much as the historical society is non-profit. Right, non but in the historical society is the only non-profit that we have that's connected to the town that you want to basically give a town asset to. I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, for instance, let's say you change the you change the ownership through some legal process over to the historical society, and we're able to get a significant that's right. grant. In yeah. fact, maybe we can work something like that. But I think again, that should be something that should be explored. And you know, someone who really knows how to write grants, if in fact we're eligible, I, I think it's an area to take a look at. I agree. Well, I, we don't, I don't, I mean, no decisions, this is just, right. we're just, discussion. and back to the foundation. We don't even really know about the foundation, so. You, you're going to have the state engineer representative come up and go over it again, state? like maybe in the spring, uh, not necessarily this guy, you said that they have, have engineers that uh, represent the state. We, oh, no, I was going to hire, yeah, we'll have to hire, hire a company, no. decide who and. It'll yeah, be up to us to hire them. What do you mean by they wouldn't accept a, a private architectural... The, where they deem it as a liability, if for us in order to say, like for your, for your opinion, and there's nothing against it, I value your opinion, sorry, but where they deem this as a liability, she's going to have to call to make sure, but I would be willing to bet they're going to have to have something of an engineer yeah, don't they have a, a qualified representative for the state to evaluate that? I mean, uh, if they ain't going to take a private architectural survey... They will take a private survey. All I've had, I've had two 
um, contractors down there, one of them hired an engineer. So that engineer wasn't working for us. Right. So I have to hire somebody and get them to, right. okay, this is what I need. I but, need to know. Does this really need to be done? Yeah. But, but, but you know, the, the MMA person in here, you don't know anything, we don't know anything about their qualifications, yeah. whether they're certified, et cetera. That, that, no. I mean, just making a comment like that, maybe there isn't liability. I mean, you need to get rid of the right. L word. And if, in fact, that person has no standing, yeah, well, that's a different yeah. story. Well, he's already yes. said, it was, I mean, there's a, it's going to affect our insurance or whatever if we don't repair. So there has to be a level of liability in what he's already done. I mean, we could even ask another, you know, we're already there. Why not ask, maybe get a second opinion from MMA to send another person up here and take a look at this thing to get that, just that word off. I mean, that changes the whole process, get, the, get that word off the book. So maybe that's a, another possibility. Well, it's the first year that he'd ever looked at this building, um, which means that, and the previous guy was more familiar with the building. He could probably tell you, you know, obviously he looked at it. We only have... Um, one of these audits every five years. Um, so they come around. Is the previous guy still employed with the state? I don't know. How I get a second thing. Well, it's Maine yeah. Municipal, Chummy. Actually, the state. Mm -hmm. It's Maine. Yep. It's MMA. Maine. MMA. Maine Municipal Association. Yeah, but that's. Yep. It's not state. That's. No, that's a, that's right. a private, private entity. entity. Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> they're, they're for profit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, Lots of yeah, and they don't want us eating into their profit. Right. No, right. that's right. Is, is uh, Bowman's engineer or whoever you mm -hmm. said that? Yep, he he gets he numbers today on the on the bill goal stuff. And I got a list. I got a list of numbers. I don't have an explanation for the list of numbers, so I can give you the number, but one thirty-one. 50, I think. Yeah. Bowman, right. Yeah. yeah. But he Bowman thinks there said. needs to be some drainage, he said. He thinks there needs, there's a timber that's cracked that needs to be replaced or shored up. Um, there was one who was telling me the other day that was okay with everything, but the basically the insulation on the silk coal was... Oh, that was just different people talking to me, you know. Okay. I, you know, I say, I say chummy. I say chummy. Is my building going to fall down? Would you look at this, Jerry? <laughs> you know, yeah. you were you were around when this happened. What did we do back then? And and does this look different to you? And you know, I I talked to everybody and anybody who could, mm -hmm. and most of them all talk about well, even if you don't do anything else, you need to horizontally insulate that bilco, get some more heat. Right. Going, so that Bilko stops. Even better stops. Off right at this point, just take the insulation out. You well, can let yep. it go off the top of the Bilko. You're yeah. way better than what you got now. Which I almost did yesterday just because I was down yeah. there and it's Insulator like, well, the heck with I can wall. remove this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Create the model of the metal, basically. Yeah. Right. Jerry, when they pour that concrete downstairs, did they pour that flat and then put the relief cuts in it? Is that what? When they poured the floor. Yeah, what about it? Was that flat? You mean, no, was it level? The, was it the, level? It was yeah. higher up here. And it, Cause I mean, yeah, it's because like, it, it, it's... Now it's pants. Yeah. It's, like, <laughs> it's like you put playing cards on a balloon. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think he's... Well, I think Bowman was almost more as far as the drainage because of the drainage. Is that part of why that's doing some of this down there? Because it's definitely not... Is there a perimeter drain around the building? An interior and an exterior perimeter drain? The, uh, when we had the foundation. Did you show right there? I, I did. Post -post -post. I mean, it's a pretty detailed quote. Mm. Does he want to see this? <laughs> he can probably read it, but you can read it. Plan. Jerry, have you seen uh, that in there? It shows it in the no, paper. that just came in this afternoon. I mean, they, they, this is a fairly detailed quote, and they didn't, I mean, at least they mm -hmm. itemize different aspects of the project. And the other quote that we got was pretty detailed as yeah. well. I have that right. as well. It's handy, that same yeah. number. Same number, right? It's close. Yeah. Very, very, very close. Very close. What was the difference in price between the two? Like $5,000. Well, oh, I think the approach yeah. did tends to be a little different. Nice work, but they're very expensive. Right. I think they approached it a little differently. Their whole... Um, yeah. right. but if, you want, if anybody wants to look at the mic. 
So what they they weren't going to pour a new wall there either. No, they were no. just going to go the construction wanted to pour yeah. another wall. Take the brick out, out, break the brick out, and make sure the pile of ashes is good and put it back together. And that'll be 130000 Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure we ever... Do you know if we ever did repoint and re and do anything to the brick? Cause it they, was, they did. Uh, they did do it because it was part of phase three and I can't find anything in here that says we completed. Well, this pitch, <laughs> some of those pictures three. look like that wall is pretty straight. When, when uh, E.W. Littlefield yep. did the repair and they top cornered the brick. Like they did. So, Relayed some on the con out here that it was bad, but it was it was a ugly pay Right, right. Down, no, no, no. They down. they weren't talking about. It. They were just kind of going to go over the, some of the mortar and and repoint and re yeah. But I couldn't tell if we finished the project or got whether distracted. Ever got finished. We got distracted. And, so we still don't know whether it was a completed project, do we? He, it, he did it was completed, they did, area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I called Littlefields and um, Alvin Littlefield, who owned the business at the time, did the project, but he's 88, and <laughs> they called him, and he said, yeah, you remember the project, but he couldn't come up with any yeah. details. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they ain't a fly by night contractor. They've done banks and post offices. And I think they're doing the high school, the, Columbus, the new school, aren't they? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Or at they least do, a portion of it. They do schools and stuff, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, you know, way back when I was Holland Kong, Grief of Haley, they was, mm. they was in business. Was that Tom? Little, yeah. Now, the, the word liability has been kicked around quite a bit. I don't know, you got here a little bit late. What, what exactly is the connective part of liability versus what our problem is? Is it Suggestions of imminent collapse of that side of the well, wall. That that's was a concern. <laughs> that yeah, was that, almost was, stated uh, that way, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. Was, he was pretty concerned. He was kind of alarmist. Almost, well, maybe he wasn't alarmist, but... You know, and then I get opinions that say, oh, there's nothing wrong, and I get opinions that say... Get out. Get out, yeah. You should, you should be moving <laughs> out, and, now. you know, and I'm going, yeah. Move don't the let library. the librarian come in today, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... When you first look at it, it, it does alarm you to, to see how the, the brick work is tipped in. I mean, but when you really start studying and looking at it, it, it hasn't moved since they, they did the repair job. Because there's modern work and stuff that they put in that hasn't moved in crack. Uh, don't we really need an independent yeah. appraiser and inspector? Yeah. And the state does have them. Well, but I know, don't know if they'll. I had uh, issues with my new home, and I had to have an independent appraiser come. I had contractors yeah. working, trying to repair from the original contractor. And because okay. there were so many issues, neither one would do anything until I got an independent contractor. Yeah. Um, so and uh, there was a gentleman from the city. He's right here in this area and I that was several years ago and I don't remember his name. I do have his card okay. and I don't know if he does commercial buildings. Uh -huh. uh, he was very good. Well, the, well ori she's... the original engineer that did the work the first time is willing to come here and do it again. They're willing to. I mean. But if they're working for a company then. No, th oh. that's what I'm saying. The, okay. the original one. Independent. Ones. Yeah, he would come back and do this. It was, know, he was going to charge us $500, 500 to assess. To assess it. Uh, yeah. The gentleman that did mine, it was like two hundred dollars. Yes. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. But I mean, if we just have any engineer come and do this, they're all gonna—I don't know what they're gonna charge. They could, they're it's gonna be in that ballpark. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Was that carpenter or something? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they were gonna send somebody who'd actually worked on the. Was previous. involved in the original? Yeah. Yeah. I and think that that's the, a reasonable. That step. was the first thought of yeah. calling anybody yeah. because yeah. they was the one that was originally involved. Right. I got a little cautious when they said, "Oh, it's been 15 years. Yeah, we have a." That's about right, and I'm going. <laughs> I'm thinking more like 50 years. years. Yeah. Long, if you yeah. put a foundation we'll in it under new house for the last 15 years. Yeah, you hope so. <clears throat> one would hope. That's yeah. what I was saying. It was an extensive job. You know, when I, when we first started talking about it, I didn't realize the extent of the job. I thought, oh, you know, they fixed it, but it was a proper job. Right. From the looks, from the pictures. Right, and it was engineered. 
Right. The only thing they didn't have the Pilot engineer masters. clerk of the works to oh. oversee it, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. What, kind of makes what me I've, nervous. What I've seen, <laughs> yeah. what, what pictures and stuff we got, I mean, they, it was done properly. You know, in the contractor and the history of them. Well, that kind of makes me nervous, Tommy, I mean, when you say that, as far as we didn't have the actual clerk of the works, and then somebody decided not to do pilasters. So, was that part of the reason why we don't want, didn't do the pilasters? Because we didn't really have, we didn't follow through with the engineering <coughs> company. Right, I, I can see why you're skeptical. That's, that's my, yeah. not, because I mean, obviously I have no idea, but when you're looking at it all on paper, right, we, need, yeah. we, we all need to know. The and, and see who was overseeing it, uh, definitely. I, I, I had skepticism, that's why I, I went over it a couple of times to... So we need to know. I guess well, there is people that will stumble over against the table to pick up a quad. Yep. Mm -hmm. no, Tom, let's go. So uh, I guess just to uh, carry <coughs> on, would the next possible uh, forward position would be that the board might suggest the initiating a committee, or looking for people to be on a committee to help some of this to start moving along as to what the steps are, or will the board be the ones that take care of the actions? So uh, what steps, Tom? What steps? Well, I mean, like Chummy had mentioned, you know, about getting uh, possibly, a, you know, uh, some interest involved in having some people, somebody on a committee in order to uh, see what the next step is going to be. I mean, are we just going to sit here tonight and think about maybe at the next town meeting just as an article on the warrant and let it go until then or take some action on it and start? I don't think, I don't think we've decided yet as to, as to how far we're going to advance the ball. Uh, I think, like I said, I think separating these issues is going to make it a little easier. This building needs to be addressed. And whether we stay here as the municipality or it ends up with a historical society or we're going to sell it to somebody, we need to know what really needs to be done with this foundation. So we've got to get a hold of an engineer that will give us an unbiased opinion. Mm -hmm. So that so we need to do. that's the next step. And we'll probably go ahead and do that, right? What, yeah. what kind of a time window did they give us on coming up with some kind of an answer as to what to do to take Well, action? like we said, some were very, very urgent and others were like, no, it's, you, you got time. You can work on this. So, I mean, I mean in, gar in regard to yeah. the insurance itself, as far as MMA, I mean, do we have a window down the road here looking at a cancellation of the pop of the policy? Well, they were talking more about, I think it depends on what your engineer tells you. <laughs> you know, they were talking about getting an action plan together and, you know, giving us the time, but I think if your engineer says, move everybody out and yeah. address this now, you know, obviously, they, you know. This carpenter comes and says basically what Jummy says, and we send that to MMA, I'll bet you we are in pretty good shape. We had to put a handrail on the stairway, and there were a couple other things, but mm -hmm. I'll bet you that will satisfy them. Mm -hmm. uh, if, on the other hand, carpenter comes and says, don't let the librarian go in there, then we've got a problem. No. <laughs> so. yeah. As I've learned in the past, I'm taking certain actions, as far as the the town goes, as long as you start to show some kind of mm -hmm. progress, sure. mm -hmm. then it usually keeps them happy, keeps right. them both yeah. at bay, so to speak. Yeah. Okay? So to have that, that's why I'm suggesting some kind of and we have, plan to think about. As you saw, we've already gotten some quotes for this work, and I think getting an engineer's yeah. kind of validation is yeah. the next step. For that audit, we, 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 we have been very long. Around. Pretty hard to evaluate the outside until you uh, with the snow spring, you until you get bare ground so you can... And we didn't, if possible, we were hoping to avoid an emergency meeting for $130,000 to... I mean, we didn't want to do that. Uh, so yeah. that's... This really hasn't been going on that long. Uh, so... Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> that audit wasn't very long ago. This is no. really the first real meeting we've had, the three of us, to really talk about all of these, these variables. So um, what you're saying, we're all set until spring for our insurance? I think as long as we show progress, uh, yeah. but I, I, I think more, most important to us anyway is, is, is this as urgent as some people think it is? Yeah. And then we need, we need an engineer to tell mm -hmm. us that. Mm -hmm. I think we can still bring in, I mean, 
both contractors that comes in, nobody's nobody's looked at this yet. I mean, they all fully agree with what you're saying, Chummy, as far as from that stone, from that concrete down, that's not the issue. The issue was from there up. Right. The so, right. So, I mean, as far as even with the snow on the ground right now, if we could get an engineer to come in here, they could they could evaluate that even with the snow there. I don't I don't think they I need like to talk, talk with the engineer if you do have one in because uh, like I say the in between the biolabs is that's cosmetic one. It it's no structural strength to a to a brick to a brick structure like that. If I was holding the building up like this. Well that's the point that's gotta be proven though. Are they correct? Right. Right. That's why you're gonna have the Engineer. Certified engineer. Right. Make That's that why maybe go right back table. to Carpenter and just okay. just and if you you're I might be able down. to get him to come in the next week or two. Yeah. And how much yeah. snow is out there? Oh not much now. You know, not, not much now. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. And we're getting more rain, so yeah. yeah. And they should know what's there. Right. I mean they right, because they did the work. Right. Right. Okay. Right. So I mean, they would know we'll if we'll do that. there or is no. the same is the same engineer still with Carpenters? The Previous owner did the plans. Oh, he did. Okay. But the present owner and the engineer that he was planning to send up both worked on the project. Oh, okay. Perfect. So they're familiar with it. That's right. That's good. Yeah. So That's they great. know exactly what's outside and everything, so they could go in the basement and mm -hmm. give an evaluation. Yep. yep. Well, and the guys this week you, climbed over the snowbank and went and looked. I mean, yeah. granted, you can't see. What's under the snow, but they went and... Okay. Uh, I'm going to request uh, an executive session on a totally different matter. Uh, under Main Revised Statute 4056A, which is personnel matter. Fine. Do you want the keys? On <laughs> we won't be long. Yeah, we're going to... Yeah. How are you doing? Good. Very, very well. Living all right? Yeah.